I did a video once before on LCR meters. This is when I had a different LCR meter before I bought this one. This one's more expensive. Um, and uh, so why did I want a more expensive one? Well, it's better spec'd and it allows me to go up to 100 kilohertz um, in frequency. Uh, 100, well, we can read it right off here. Um, frequency is a, a little tiny little thing here. So this one says 1 kilohertz, uh, 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, 100 hertz, and 120 hertz. So in the old days, 120 and 100 were like pretty standard. Uh, this one defaults to a kilohertz for all of the measurements, uh, but it is nice having the higher frequencies up there too, especially for things like inductors and things. Um, so I thought uh, I'll put a link down below of kind of what LCR meters do and stuff. Uh, and I thought we'd take a look at maybe a couple of the other features here that maybe people haven't talked about or I haven't talked about. Um, one question I keep getting asked all the time is uh, if you look right here, all right, uh, let me put this into a fixed range, okay? So that funny little thing right there, it shows a resistor and then the unknown in parallel, and there's a P. So that's the parallel model. You're modeling the part as uh, some thing with some resistance on it. So it might an inductor with some resistance or a capacitor with some resistance, um, or even a resistor with some resistance. I know that doesn't make any sense, but uh, as we go, uh, around, sometimes it will look like this. It will look like the resistor is in series with the device under test and that, with an S on it. So that's the series model and that's the parallel model. And the question I get asked is, well, when do you use one over the other? Well, the, the meter chooses it for you, but if assuming that you want to choose it yourself, why, why is one better than the other? Uh, and it comes down to impedance, uh, effective resistance of the parts. And the rule of thumb is if it's um, below 100 ohms, either in resistance or reactance or whatever, uh, if it's below 100 ohms, use parallel mode. And if it's greater than 100 ohms, use series mode. I think I've got that right. Uh, nope. Uh, if it's <laughs> less than 100 ohms, use series. And if it's more than 100 ohms, use parallel. There we go. Um, and let's take a look at what this particular unit does. Okay, it's in the it's in the manual. So hopefully you can read this printout here. But you can see that for resistance, uh, if it's below uh, around 100 ohms, 200 ohms, it's shifting gears into series. And then if it's above 200, 100, 200 ohms, it's going into parallel mode, okay? And that's just for a resistor. So even, even though you would think it wouldn't matter with the resistance, the calibrations and stuff uh, are better with one mode or the other because they are different mathematical models inside of the device, okay? So when you do the open short calibration, uh, it does store those cal datas differently for the uh, series and parallel. Uh, here, here it is for a capacitor. Uh, so uh, you can see here that for uh, real small picofarads, it's using parallel mode, and for very large um, microfarads, it's using series. And the effective resistance of the large things are going to be low, so you go to series, and then tiny little things are like high value, high resistance or high, um, like a mega ohm or, you know, kill ohm or something. And you go into parallel mode. So that's, that's how the choice is. It's made. And then the same for, same for inductor. So read, read, if you have one of these, read your manual. It'll tell you whether, whether you should be in parallel mode or series mode. And fortunately the thing chooses for me. So I don't have to worry about it. All right. So this one has ESR and d q and theta um i've talked about these in a diff different video but i think it, it bears talking about them again all right so let's put in a um let's put in a 
capacitor. Doesn't matter which one, we'll just pop in a capacitor here. All right. And so hit the auto button. Four point nine microfarad capacitor, and uh, up here is uh, hopefully you can read those. That's the D value. If you hit the button, it gives you then the Q value, and you hit the button, and it gives you the theta. All right. Now, one of the things you have to know before you ever think about LCR measurements or vector network measurements and stuff is that. Capacitors give a negative um, angle, okay, and inductors give a positive angle. If you're familiar with a Smith chart, capacitance is in the negative direction, minus I, 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 J, you know, minus J theta, J omega, right? Um, and in the up direction, it's positive. Well, same thing here is we're getting a negative angle, 88.3 degrees. Now, a perfect capacitor is minus 90 degrees, okay? Let's put in a perfect inductor. Well, I mean, not perfect. Let's put in an inductor, and it should give us a positive angle, okay? It's giving us, uh, oops, we got to put it back into angle. So it's giving a positive angle, 84.4 degrees, all right? So, like I said before, po a perfect inductor will give you plus 90 degrees, Eli the Iceman, I before E, 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 right? Um, and so 90 degrees will be the target for a perfect thing, but we have real world things. So capacitors have some inductance in them. They have some resistance in them. They have dielectrics in them that aren't, that are not, not linear. Uh, inductors have resistance in them, they have straight capacitance in them, and so they they act like real devices instead of perfect devices, okay? All right, let's put the uh, capacitor back in. Um, and I'll just lock it down here. Okay, so we have 4.9 microfarads. All right, so let's go back to theta, okay? We have 88.4 degrees. All right, 88.4 degrees. All right, let's put our calculator here. Let's say 90, and we have 88.4. We have a delta of 1.6 degrees. So it's 1.6 degrees away from being perfect. Well, where does that come from? Well, it comes from dielectrics, it comes from other things, but it's basically a lossy mechanism. It's something that you don't want, okay? And so you can specify that in angle, some people do. So there's our angle. If we push the button, we can now specify it as a D, okay? That's the dispersion. That's a measurement of the dielectric eating up uh, the electrical fields, okay? If we take 1.6 degrees and we take the tangent of it, uh, we get a number of 0 0.28. And what do we read here? 0 0.28. That's all it is. It takes the angle and it takes the tangent. So this is the tangent of the angle. All right. Now, let's say that we want the Q value. What does Q mean? Well, Q is just the quality factor. It just gives you an idea of how good of things are, right? What if we take that number and we take the reciprocal of that number? I get 35.8. 35. .8. 35.8 whatever, 35.5, it's going to have some rounding factors and stuff too. So 1 over D is Q. What is D? The tangent of theta. So D, Q, and theta are all <laughs> the same number, just different mathematical representations. Why do they have three numbers for the same thing? It depends on what you're thinking about. Are you thinking about the bandwidth of a circuit, you might want to know Q. Are you thinking about the loss of a filter? You might be thinking about D. Uh, if you're thinking about phase relationships, you might think about theta. Um, and then there's something called ESR. And ESR is uh, 0.9 ohms. So you understand that tangent is a rise over run type of thing, right? Short over the long. And this is the short over the long. So if you have a zero, a 90 degree vector, 
then your ESR is going to be zero ohms. And then as you start moving off of that, you'll increase some ohmage, right? So if you're around, we're at 88.3 degrees, we have one ohm, okay? Let me increase the frequency here just to prove a point. Okay, now we've gone to 83 degrees. We're a little bit worse now, and we're a little bit worse in ohmage. We're at point, 0.4 ohms now, right? So the more dissipation factor the lossier your system, then you can imagine that you're introducing more re resistance, right? Or not introducing more resistance, you're um, putting in a bigger resistor, right? So instead of zero ohms, you go to 0.3 ohms, you go to five ohms, you go to 10 ohms, right? And so the bigger the resistor in there, the, the vector will move over because you're gonna have more loss in the system. Okay, hope that makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Let's put in a 0.1. Hit the button here. We'll put in a, a 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor. Should have a little bit of, of. Uh, it shouldn't have as good of a ESR. And uh, we'll put to push the ESR button, and we are measuring about 2.7 ohms of ESR, which is effective series resistance. It's. It, if you built a model with a resistor in series with the capacitor, it kind of looks like it's a 2.7 ohm resistor in series. So that's what ESR is all about. All right, and you can see that it's th this button and this, th they're all just mathematical versions of this angle. And it's a vector voltmeter. It's measuring the vector, it's measuring the angle. So it's just measuring uh, angle and magnitude and everything else is calculated from there. That's what these things do, all right? And then with a little bit of extra math and stuff, you can give it its, what its inductance is, what its capacitance is, what its resistance is, and what its uh, reactance or impedance is, so the z factor here, right? Okay, I'm gonna put in a uh, uh, inductor this time, and uh, let me lock that down. So we have about 448 microhenries. We have a Q value of one, we have a D value of one, because one over one is one. So the, both the D and the Q are the same. And what kind of angle do we get? We get 45 degrees. Well, that's interesting, 45 degrees, remember? What is tangent? It's rise over run, right? So it's the same over the same is 45 degrees, right? That's, that, that's why it's 45 degrees. And that's why your D and your Q are both equal, to, equal okay? Let's put in a different one. And we're getting 36 degrees out of this one. But inductors are sometimes used with high frequency. So if we bump the frequency up, let's bump it up to say, to say 10 kilohertz, okay? Now it's looking more like the capacitors, right? Now it's acting more like a, a, an inductor because it, it works well with these high frequencies. So at 10 kilohertz, we're now getting 88 and a half degrees, which gives us a D of, of uh, 0.026, the tangent of 88 degrees. One over that is 38, which is the Q value. Um, so again, all the numbers are related. All right, um, people worry about these test leads, using test leads instead of plugging the device right into the part. Um, so let me put the test leads in. And you can see immediately that we have 1.6 picofarads. Uh, and that's due to the capacitance between the two wires. If I push the two wires close together, it's making a three and a half picofarad, uh, three and a half picofarad capacitor. So um, sometimes you don't have to worry about that. The difference to plus or minus four picofarads is not such a big deal if you're measuring one nanofarad or something, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, so what we can do is we can, let's see here, let's measure this this capacitor here is a half a percent capacitor, so it's pretty accurate. And let's measure him. It's measuring 160, okay? Now the part is labeled as a 158, so we're two picofarads wrong, okay? So what we can do is we can calibrate. So this is exactly the same as a nano VNA calibration. We're gonna do an open. Okay, so we'll do an open. And I would say when you do the open, have the leads like you're gonna use them. And 
and then we're going to do a short. So we'll just put these on one side, and now they're shorted together. And I will hit Cal, and it'll do its short calibration. So this is a vector voltmeter, so it's doing the same thing as a as a VNA. All right, and then when we're done with his, there we go. We are done calibrating, and then we'll move the clip to the other side, and we're measuring the 158 uh, that this capacitor is marked at. So that's the way that you take care of any leads that you have. You want to measure some capacitor that won't won't plug in there. One of these uh, one of these capacitors won't won't go in there. So there you go. Uh, use calibration when you need to. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but up at the top, right? Up at the top. If I do a normal auto, this this button right here is the auto button. If I if I hit auto. Um, it does the automatic and it goes back to all the default settings. And right there, I think you can read, it says OS-Factory. And that's saying it's using the factory calibration. If you did your own calibration, that'd be blank. And it was when we came in, right? So if you see OS-Factory, that means that you're running off a of factory calibration. And uh, if I take off the part, again, we have that two picofarad offset. If I pull the leads out, it's calibrated for the condition where there's no leads attached, right? Um, so, yeah, there you go. Okay, there you go. Just some extra information about LCR meters and um, what those different uh, what those different numbers mean and how they're calculated.